for Kruma Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled, The Crisis of Today Goes Beyond the Future of Cyril Ramaphosa and May Affect That of the State. Hi, Raymond. Hi. What do you mean by referring to norms that are illegal and criminals having a higher status than the law and constitution? What does wrong is right mean? Yes, now I've never said this before, but you see, I was thinking originally of writing about uh, the farm scandal of Ramaphosa. But as I was thinking about it, I thought there's something that's bigger than that. And what I think has happened is that we have one of the best constitutions in the world. We've got laws that have been made that carry out that constitution or elaborate on things that the, con the constitution can't deal with everything. So legislation has to elaborate on it, but be in line with it. But you've got a situation, especially in the Zuma era, but in my view, continuing in the present era, where a lot of those laws are being undermined by politicians uh, who just break the law, they either steal or they defy decisions of the courts who have also been a very important force uh, for what is right. Uh, I gave the example of how there were a lot of court decisions in Bishop for the Eastern Cape laying down norms for the schools to have certain facilities. And to this day, they have not been implemented. So you have a situation where you still have people dying in pit toilets in uh, the north, um, in Popa, I think, and uh, maybe also in northwest, but mainly in Limpopa and in the Eastern Cape. And you've got a lot of scandals happening there. So what I'm saying is what you have in South Africa is that the highest norm, a law is a norm, meaning a value or standard. The highest norm is not the constitution. It is law breaking. Law breaking has a higher validity in South Africa in the Zuma era. And in my view, it's continuing in the post Zuma era. If only 10% of what Cyril Ramaphosa is alleged to have done is correct, then he will have been involved in very serious and illegal activities. I don't know whether, it's, whether any of the allegations are true, but I'm saying there is a, an atmosphere of irregularity in the Zuma period for sure, but in my opinion, it's continuing in this period. And talking about the Zuma era, Raymond, you say that the norms and practices of Ramaphosa era represent continuity with that of the Zuma era. So is this not an exaggeration? When Sir Ramaphosa was elected, he was elected by a very narrow majority in the ANC. So that in the ANC, he had to negotiate a very delicate balance to secure his leadership and if he were to be renewing the ANC, and I, I seriously doubt that he's tried to do that, but if he were to be doing it, he would have to negotiate with people who were not uh, those who supported him when he was elected. But, you know, the ANC's problems are not the country's problems. And for us to have Sir Ramaphosa remain president is important if he is driving the renewal of the country. And I am not convinced that he actually did make the attempt and that he did break with Zoomism. What he did is he brought into his cabinet, and he still has in his cabinet, some of the worst people from the Zoom era. He still has in ANC headquarters, he's had from the beginning people getting ministerial salaries, I believe, who were ministers or leading figures in the Zuma era. So, A, he doesn't really have um, control over head office insofar as he allowed Eismacher Schule to make appointments 
and to decide who would be in very important places, like Nomvula Mokonyane, as far as I'm aware, is still head of organization. Now, she is definitely not someone who distinguished herself in the Zuma era as following the norms of the constitution. There are a lot of allegations against her, which may lead to charges. Gigaba, I think he may still, you know, he may have been affected by the step aside rule, but he was also in head office. So you have a situation where there's not been a rupture with the Zumi era at the level of personnel, but at the level of practice, some of the allies of, of Ramaphosa are themselves fingered in the Zondo Commission. Mantashe and others, and Mantashe is taking it on review, but there's a lot of allegations against him and others. So this is a situation where at the level of continuation of Zuma people, but also the Ramaphosa people, you've got a situation which is antagonistic to the rule of law, and in that sense, a continuity with the Zuma era. And lastly, you say that we are in a situation where criminality and illegality are the norms of the state, displacing the constitution and laws. If this is the case, how do we remedy this? What I said in the article is that the fact that a problem is urgent doesn't mean that the solution can be provided quickly. And I would like it to be provided quickly, but Sometimes you don't actually have the power to do it immediately, and we have to build that power. As I argue in a later article, we all agree, or let's say most South Africans do agree with the Constitution, and it represents the South Africa that we want. Since there is this goodwill towards the Constitution, that is a program behind which we can try to mobilize people. But I'm not sure exactly how to do it. I think business must be part of it. I wouldn't have said that 20 years ago. Unions, unemployed workers, professionals, a number of others need to get together to try to remedy the situation. And it may take time, although it's urgent. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Prima Media's policy about the crisis of today goes beyond the future of Sri Ramaphosa and may affect that of the state.